Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Habatifillah. I thought it would be beneficial to go over a short treatise called The Meaning of Tawakkal by Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala taken from his book uh, Mudarij al-Salikin. And Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala and we're going to try to make this as brief and concise and go through and benefit and especially why we have weather that accommodates that. Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said the definition of a tawakkal, true reliance upon Allah. And <clears throat> the Salaf used to, some of the Salaf used to refer to tawakkal as اعتماد على الله وفعل أسباب meaning that you rely on Allah and this is an, an issue of the heart uh, you know, putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the natija, for the uh, end result of whatever you're trying to do وفعل أسباب meaning that you make effort to achieve whatever you're trying to do so the person for example who wants their risk increase or they want to uh, buy a house for example that this person is a person a per the person who has true tawakkul tawakkul which is the meaning of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah this is a person then that will uh, make efforts to gain the money a halal means to be able to purchase their home and they will get a job to do so or they will start a business or they will be a, become a private contractor or whatever they uh, whatever the means that are lawful in order to attain that end result which is the house and then they will to forward a more him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then they will give their affair to Allah so they made the effort but their trust and their iman is in Allah. It's not in the reason. And Ibn al-Qayyim is going to uh, expound upon that extensively in this treatise. He said, in reality, a tawakkal is a condition that consists of a number of matters together. The reality of a tawakkal will not be completed except with them. All those who defined it indicated one, two, or more of them. Meaning, more uh, reasons. Uh or the uh, several different matters which comprise of tawakkul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, so the start of that is knowledge and awareness of the Lord and his attributes, his power, his ability and sufficiency that he sustains and supports everything, that everything is fully comprehended by his knowledge, that everything occurs by his will and power. So this knowledge and awareness is the first step for the servant in the affair of a tawakkul. Then Ibn al Qayyim said, Our Shaykh, meaning Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, said, Therefore, tawakkul will not be correct and cannot be imagined from a person of philosophy, nor from the Qadariya, those who deny pre decree and who say that things that he did not will can exist within his dominion. Nor will it be sound and correct from the Jahmiya who deny the attributes of Allah, the tremendous in majesty, uh, majesty. Nor will a tawakkul be sound and correct except from those who correctly affirm his attributes. So what tawakkul can there be from a person who believes that Allah does not know the details of all the parts of the creation within the heavens and the earth, and that he does not do actions as he chooses, and that he does not have will, and that he does not possess attributes. So here Shaykh al-Islam uh, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala is pointing out the fact that many of Ahl al-Bid'at, even in this concept of tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ahl al-Sunnah differentiated from Ahl al-Bid'ah, like the Qadariyah, those extreme from the Qadariyah, those people who believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge did not encompass everything in creation. This is what the Qadariyah, some of the extreme nufat of the Qadariyah, they believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not have full knowledge of everything. Otherwise, that would not be just for him to create you and you to be a disobedient soul and to be in the hellfire. So they say, instead, uh, uh, trying to flee from one innovation 
from just pure pre-determination uh, where the slave has no will, they flee from that to say, well, no, instead we will negate some of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute of El, meaning his knowledge is not full, it does encompass everything. And that, you know, because it wouldn't be from justice if he, he knows everything and then there's disobedient slaves who are punished by him or, or someone will sin and, and so on and so forth. So they all this is from Ahl Kalam, from their Aql, from their intellect. They reasoned about the Nasus instead of a Taslim and Nasus. And then he mentioned also those people who negate the Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, those Qadriya, they do negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Sifat of Elm. They negate the sifat of El. And so then he mentions, so the more a person knows and is better aware of Allah and his attributes, then his tawakkul will be sounder and stronger. And Allah, the one free of all imperfections and the most high knows best. So here, Ibn al-Qayyim is illustrating that tawakkul ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, true tawakkul and iman billah has a, a very important uh, relationship with tawheed. Because how can you truly have iman billah and you don't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't know uh, fully about Allah subhanahu or accept rububiyah, the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how is it possible that you can know true tawakkul and true iman billah if you do not believe in the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you believe in the names but you negate the attributes like the jahamiya or how is it you can have this true tawakkul and this true iman if you <coughs> commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you negate what or that you go against what uh tawheed uh ibadah meaning you violate to uh, tawheed and ibadah by committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so let me give you an example to make this clear. So for example, the person who says la ilaha illallah, as we have many in the ummah who fall into this, unfortunately, wallahu musta'an. They say, there are people who say la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. They've taken the shahada. That, that is the miftal jannah. This is the key to paradise. This is the key to enter you in its both Islam. But then on top of that, they also give a share in partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Abdul Qadir al-Jailani and some even with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they say Ya Muhammad please give me this please let my wife not be barren and that she can have a child Oh Abdul Qadir al-Jailani please increase my risk wa'iyadin billah min shirk wa kufr wa zandaka so this shows us Allah, that some people they if they negate some of the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no way they can have true tawakkal ala Allah because they're actually, their tawakkal is tawakkal ala Allah wa tawakkal ala nas. It's tawakkal ala Allah and it's tawakkal ala some saints or even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or some people, you know, all the various forms of shirk wa wallahu musta'an. Then Ibn al-Qayyim says the second level to affirm the means al-asbab and the causes the musababat so here Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala is talking about the causes as we said al-intimad uh, Allah wa fi'l asbab that tawakkal Allah is to rely put your trust totally with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fi'l asbab meaning making the effort so here Ibn al-Qayyim Ibn al-Qayyim is talking about the efforts making the efforts uh, to attain uh, whatever you're trying to attain, to attain righteous, to, to attain your goals in life, to attain your riz, you want to go to the university. You can't go to the university if you don't apply to the university. That's fi'l asbab. That's, you can't go to the university if you don't register. If you do not pay the money, the, pe the fees, or you have a scholarship, or you have a grant, it's impossible. It's basically impossible. You must fi'l asbab. So that means you, are, you make the effort, you fill out the application, you register, you pay the fees, and you... Or, or something similar to this and you put your that whether they accept you or not that's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you made every effort you had good grades in high school or whatever the case may be but I think the point has been known Ibn al-Qayyim says since whoever denies these meaning the reasons then his tawakkul is defective this is the opposite of what seems to be the case to the people of shallow thinking those who think that affirming the means is detrimental to tawakkul and that denying them is perfect tawakkul. 
So Ibn al-Qayyim here is talking about some of the extreme Sufis that who advocate the abandonment of the means to achieve something. So you have those groups and those people who resemble them, who say, for example, I, and we know many people who say, I'm going to go study. I, I know many people in the time, and we, some extreme examples, brothers who wanted, they wanted to go to the and study, but they made no effort. They didn't have a money for ticket. They didn't know, have any contacts. They didn't do anything to attain that. They just went. And some people didn't achieve anything. Some people actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored them with some asbab, some means. Or many examples, uh, other examples are people, they don't, they, they go out and do talab al-ilm with their families and they have no means to support their family. They don't financially, they don't work. They, maybe they don't even ask from the community. And maybe they don't beg from the community, which is another issue. But the point is, this tawakul, you have to make an effort. If you want to seek knowledge, if you want to gain knowledge, you have to seek knowledge. You have to do talab al You can't sit in your room and say, I want to be a sheikh, or I want to be a student of knowledge, or I want to be uh, someone of from Ahl al-ilm, or I want to be a da'i in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to make da'wah to Allah, but you've made no efforts to attain that status. So... Those people uh, who make false tawakkul of some of the extreme Sufis, for example, they would, uh, for example, want to be, say that they were, you know, they thought it was from asceticism and piety to leave off cleaning themselves and to just sit in the masjid. And some of them, they were dirty. And some of them, they, uh, but they wanted, to, they still needed a risk to take care of something in their dunya. And they still wanted to attain certain things, but they made no effort. They made no effort. So these are the ones who are the foolish ones, Ibn al-Qayyim is mentioning, that they uh, uh, deny the asbab. They reject doing effort. They just say, no, my dear respected brother, sit in the masjid and uh, we're going to rectify the ummah. Or you're going to attain righteousness or you're going to attain status but you're not going to take care of your family you're not going to do the things that you need to do to even truly attain it because it's with Allah they believe that they're putting full trust in Allah and totally abandonment of asbab but this is incorrect have a yukhalif ahl sunnah this goes against what ahl sunnah holds to be tawakkul and what the nasus ahl sunnah holds what uh, tawakkul true tawakkul to come from the book of allah and the sunnah the message of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the madhab of the salaf how they understood this concept of tawakkul so then ibn al-qayyim he said so know that the tawakkul of those who deny the means of al-asbab meaning the the reasons that you attain something will never be sound and correct since tawakkul itself is from the strongest means for attainment of the matter concerning which one is doing tawakkul. So it is like supplication, a dua, which Allah has made a means for attainment of that which he supplicates for. So part of an example of, of what would be correct is at least someone making a dua to attain something. If they don't have some physical means to attain something, for example, they've exhausted everything, they've exhausted means, but they're supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, please increase my risk, please bless me with work, please bless me with the opportunity, I've exhausted my thing. So this person is not falling under that because there are supplication. Supplication, a dua, Allah has made a means for that which the person supplicates for. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil until the next sitting. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.